Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. And it's time for our next hot topic. On this one, we're talking about how Nigerians have turned to traditional healers as prices of drugs go up. And we have our guest here, Nick, Ag Nick Agule. He's a public affairs analyst. I'm just here to dive into this topic. Good morning, Nick. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. And good morning to our viewers. Good morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for being here. Um, okay, so we're talking about prices of drugs being ridiculously expensive. And I know, uh, you know, it's it's in peripacy with the whole dollar rate and dollars gone up. So drugs um, has also gone up. But people are now moving into traditional healers because of this. What is your thoughts? And we'll just go right in. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question. Yeah. Uh, we cannot blame the people who are seeking alternative uh, solutions to their healthcare needs away from uh, orthodox because of the current situation in the country. Uh, we know that uh, people's uh, incomes have largely remained the same, whereas the cost of living has uh, escalated, uh, especially coming from the increase in the cost of petrol, which is impacting on the cost of transportation and then the cost of goods uh, in the market, because those goods are transported to the market. And also the foreign exchange reforms adopted by this government uh, because we are not uh, manufacturing uh, most of the orthodox medicines that we consume in Nigeria. We are having to import a huge chunk of the medicines that are coming to Nigeria. And this is being impacted by the cost of uh, imports because uh, the same medicines are the same cost uh, when dollar was 400 and something, we now cost much higher with dollar now being uh, 1,500 naira. So this is uh, the reason that we now find so much um, uh, inflation in the market. And this is, this is pushing people to uh, seek alternative uh, uh, medical um, uh, alternative medicine for their medical conditions. And you can't blame them because if you cannot afford orthodox medicine, what would you do? Will you just sit down and die? Or you just have to find a way and see if you can go to, go to get a cure. So this is the background to what is happening in the country right now. Yeah. Okay, so I know, I know that, I mean, people go for... Um, these traditional healers right now because of the prices of the orthodox medicine or the, the, the drugs that you get from all these pharmaceuticals. But how effective are these traditional medicine? I, I, I want to believe that people will tell you, oh, you know what, even all of these pharmaceuticals, they're getting them from um, the herbs that these um, traditional healers use. But my, my, my worry now is most of them are not NAFDAQ approved. So what are you putting in your body um, are you just going to take something because you're saying, I cannot afford this other one? Are there, are there like um, ways to ensure that you are careful with what you're even ingesting into your body? Yeah, so uh, uh, it, that's a very good point that you have raised. Um, what is the efficacy of these medicines? Yes. Um, sometimes you you even find out find out that because uh, these medicines are not regulated, you even talk about dosage. Does she have a dosage? Because there is a particular quantity of these substances that you take that instead of they being helpful to you, they rather become harmful because you are taking too much of it and your internal organs like your liver and your kidney can no longer possess so much quantity of it. 
That is why in the orthodox medicine, uh, drugs are given with specific dosage. Yeah. Some of them will just be like 5 milligram, 10 milligram. Some will just say, if it's 10 milligram and you need 5 milligram, you need to break it into, into two and things like that. You, you, you often don't find that with the authority medicine. Uh, so uh, there are risks involved. But when people are pushed to the wall, uh, like I said, I mean, if you fall ill, and you cannot afford uh, orthodox medicine, what, what are your choices? Your choices are either you just stay where you are and eventually die of your illness, or you will seek any help available anywhere. And that is where government needs to come in. And uh, now that government knows that a lot of Nigerians are patronizing this uh, alternative medicine, or traditional medicine, as some we call it, government needs to step into that space and try to see if they can control that sector, regulate it, and ensure that uh, there are no sharp practices and that the medicines that are being sold to, to Nigerians um, are going to actually cure their illnesses instead of making their conditions worse. Mm. So it's a big area for government to step in and do uh, some work. Okay, so, I mean, from what you said, government needs to step in to make sure that they re regu regulate them, uh, make sure that there's efficacy to this. But now, um, is, is there anything, any initiative that the government is doing to even ensure the affordability of healthcare in Nigeria? Because I don't think anyone wants to just go to a traditional um, healer. I think most people would rather just have, the, you know, the, the counter drugs where you just know that, okay, this is my dosage, this is what I'm having. And, you know, in a few days, you're, you're sure. Because most times, right, why I think people might not really want to go to traditional healers is because a lot of research have been done with these other drugs that you're getting from the pharmaceutical. There's been research, there's been testing. So you, there's, there's that form of trust with the with the with the medicine right compared to traditional healers that you don't even know how this was formulated by someone so now my question is is the government even doing anything to ensure that people can actually afford health care in nigeria we're talking about the affordability of health care because that's the reason that is pushing people to these traditional healers what do you think very good question um so uh, if you look at it globally, uh, there are two, two areas that governments, even in the pure capitalist economies, yeah. hardly live entirely in the hands of businesses. Mm. And those two areas are education and healthcare. So if you go to the UK, for instance, even though it's a free market economy, it's capitalist, you still have the, NHS. the government is the one providing education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the government is the one providing education and it's free of charge, free of charge education from when the child is three years until when the child is 18. And after 18, the child is either going to university or going into some vocational uh, and technical uh, skill training. Uh, so it's at the university that the child will have to pay. And the same thing for healthcare. The government of the UK is providing total and comprehensive health care free of charge to all the citizens, you know, and, uh, you know, that includes everything. So when you go uh, through the health care system in the UK, you are not expected to bring out your money and pay for anything. And that is right from primary health care. You know, a lot of people confuse primary health care to be a uh, rural health care. No. Primary health care starts with you going to see your family doctor, even if you're in the city or in the, you're in the village GP, or anywhere. Yeah. You see your family doctor, and your family doctor will examine you. And if the family doctor believes that your condition is what uh, they can treat, they will treat you um, and, and give you the drugs. Uh, if your family doctor believes that your condition needs hospital care, then they are the ones who will refer you to the hospital. So in the UK, you don't just walk into a hospital. You, you have to be referred to the hospital by your family doctor, who is called the GP, general practitioner. Yeah. So then you go to hospital, the hospital, they, they carry out tests for you. 
you know, if it's uh, surgeries, they perform surgeries, they do all sorts of things for you. And if the hospital now thinks that your condition requires specialist care, say for instance, the hospital eventually now discovers that you have cancer. The hospital will then will now refer you to a cancer hospital. You know, and that cancer hospital is a tertiary healthcare. So you start from primary health care, your GP, secondary health care, the hospital, tertiary health care, a specialist hospital, where if you go to a cancer hospital, right from the gate to the topmost in that hospital, it's only cancer they think about. It's only cancer they research, it's only cancer they treat. Mm. You know, and all that is for free. In an economy like the UK, where there are high employment levels, high income levels, you know, high literacy levels and all of that. Yet the government is coming in, basically subsidizing healthcare. And the Nigerian constitution provides that uh, Nigerian citizens are guaranteed healthcare. It's one of the duties of government. You know, when they say the duties of government is welfare and security, in that welfare is healthcare. Nigerians are expected to enjoy comprehensive healthcare, either totally free or at very subsidized rates. And you know, in Nigeria, in, in the days that people like me were growing up in the 70s, we enjoyed total and free comprehensive health care in Nigeria. Then you got to a point where uh, if you go to hospital, uh, at least they will con you will do consultation, they will do tests for you and all of that. They come up with a diagnosis. And uh, there, there were no drugs in the again in the hospital. So they will write uh, a prescription for you to go and buy your drugs. That is why uh, General Sani Abacha, in his school speech, when they were overthrowing uh, General Buhari, he said that uh, our hospitals have now become male consulting clinics. Mm -hmm. uh, but today, as we speak today, you cannot even get free consultation in any government hospital, mm. whether federal or state. Go and check it out. If you go to a, to, to a government-owned hospital today, you are expected to pay money. And these monies that you are expected to pay are not tokens. You know, I, I have someone that we took to Federal Medical Center in Kefi to treat uh, her of, uh, uh, she, she had a, a kidney, kidney problem. They, they were charging bills that were running into the millions of Naira. You won't wow. believe this, a government hospital that is being funded by government uh, money, which is basically our money. So there is almost a near total collapse of uh, public health care in Nigeria. The government hospitals that are available now, either some of them have been commercialized or they are just taking this kind of big money. And so you are not even sure if those monies that they are taking are going into uh, government's post. Mm. So there is a need for this government at the federal, state and local to actually declare a state of emergency in the health care sector. And and, and let the government, uh, the leaders who swore by the constitution to protect, abide and work by the constitution, look into the constitution where Nigerian citizens have been guaranteed health care so that they cannot provide health care for Nigerians. You know, a lot of money needs to be put into that sector. But you see, in Nigeria today, instead of putting money in the essential services like education or, or health care, which are the social services, we are putting a lot of money into, into defense and security. So instead of buying drugs and books for schools, we are buying bullets and guns mm. and ammo tanks and, and, and fighter jets to kill Nigerian citizens who are in, engaging in banditry and all sorts of things. So I, I think uh, government needs to realign its priorities because a lot of Nigerians are going through a whole lot of uh, problems. So if you were to advise the government on how to go about this prices of drugs quickly, because we have to wrap it up now, if you were just to give about two or three advice on how to ensure that the prices of drugs, you know, just come down a little for people to be able to afford it, what was the advice that you would give? Okay, so like, uh, I, I can give you the UK model about drugs. Okay. In the UK, they run something like an insurance uh, system for drugs. So they have a drug fund. They have a drug fund. And uh, anybody who is prescribed a medicine, and that person is working and paying taxes, then that person can assess 
any drug in that uh, drug bank uh, paying the same amount of money. <laughs> so even if you are getting a prescription of that, let me say in Nigeria money, is worth 2,000 naira, and that drug fund, you are expected to pay uh, 5,000. You pay 5,000. Even if you are taking a prescription that is worth 50,000, you are paying 5,000. So whatever you're paying is coming into that drug fund. The government is using that drug fund to now buy drugs. So it's like an insurance policy. You know, in insurance, mm -hmm. where all of us pay the same premium, but some people make claims, you know, while others yeah. don't, mm -hmm. you know. So that is the kind of thing. It, it, the government can think about that by, by setting up a drug fund where, um, you know, government uh, hospitals will dispense drugs at a fixed rate. You know, so those whose drugs are not as expensive are contributing to help those whose drugs are expensive. So at the end of the day, everybody has access to drugs, you know. And, you know, those who are either unemployed or they are now old or are suffering specific ailments and all of that, they access that drug for, for free. Oh, so what that means is that other citizens who are paying for drugs are actually contributing that uh, these citizens who are, who are not as uh, well off can also have drugs. And that's why they're taking their drugs for free. And that is uh, something specific that the Nigerian government can look at. But apart from that, I think there has to be a, 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 a very deliberate and intentional um, uh, action by, by governments at all levels. And, you know, we mostly focus on the federal government, forgetting that the state governments are also taking a lot of money, just as the local government. I mean, if you look at the Federal Allocation Committee, you discover that uh, the monies that both the state governments and local governments are taking combined is more than the money that the federal government is taking. Mm. So this uh, subnational government, we need to have a lot of focus on them. What are they doing with their monies? You know, like since um, this government came into being, the Federal Allocation um, Accounts and Allocation Committee, FAC, has been uh, disbursing over a trillion each time. And these monies are going to say, what are they doing with these monies? Government need to understand that if the citizenry is not healthy, then productivity is going to be low. And when productivity is low, everybody suffers. Because that is where you see that there will be no much of economic uh, right. uh, uh, progress. And, uh, you, uh, you know, citizens are old. This is a duty that those who are in leadership position owe the citizens to provide them a uh, comprehensive health care. Yeah. So, I think that there, there has to be a state of emergency declared in this sector. A lot of money needs to come in. Hospitals mm -hmm. need to be refurbished. Uh, doctors need to be recruited, paid well. Nurses, uh, you know, pharmacists, all the healthcare workers need to be, you have a lot of them, recruit them, pay them well. You know, like in the UK, like I said, the National Health Service, which is the healthcare system of the UK, they pay <laughs> people very well. They are one of the all best right. paying organizations in the UK employ millions and millions of people. Okay. And those are the kind of models that I would expect Nigeria to copy. Okay. Well, hopefully um, we, we copy those models and, you know, our healthcare system becomes better because, I mean, I don't think anybody just wants to go and start to take traditional herbs. Herbs are good, fine, but you want to, tr you know, take something that is tried, tested, and trusted. But um, anyways, we want to say thank you. Thank you for coming, and thank you for just bringing more insights into this topic. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, too, and uh, happy day to address. Thank you. You too. All right, we've been speaking with Nick Agule. He's a public affairs analyst, and we're talking about why Nigerians have turned to traditional healers as the prices of drugs go up. Um, this is where we have to drop, draw the curtain here on The Breakfast. It's been a wonderful day, you know, just having all of these topics and reviewing the papers as well. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now. My name is Rumer Paulson.